Okay, that's kind of want to get myself in the mood. I, I like that beat. Um, I know, I know, I'm retarded. Right. Fine. Um, okay, we have a triangular prism, right? So, to do the triangular prism, there's a couple rules we always talk about. Whenever we're talking about prisms, and I don't care what kind of prism you guys are talking about. Right? One thing you guys notice about a prism is they have the base happens twice. Like you have two bases. Okay? You have it in the front and the back, top and the bottom, right? So that's what we call a prism. When you have, you know, your base is, you know, a replica. You have the base twice, pretty much. So um, when looking at this, what we need to do is we need to find the area of the base. So for a triangle, to find the area of the base, we need to do um, you know, length times width or base times height, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it. Well, length times width is very easy to use when uh, we have a uh, right triangle. However, when we have a triangle that is not a right triangle, here we have an isosceles triangle. I do not have a right angle, um, but what I do have is I have the height. And so one big common mistake that students will do is they'll say, oh, length times width, right? Or one half length times width. So they'll do three times 3.5 and multiply by one half. That's a big mistake. Don't do it like that. You only really want to use your length times width when you have a right triangle. When it's not a right triangle, you need to know what the height is of the triangle. So here, the area of my base, um, actually, you know what? What I'll do is, let me actually just write you out what a prism. So the volume, of a prism is equal to the area of the base times the height. And I don't care what kind of prism you're dealing with, even if it's a, you know, octagon, okay? And I don't want to draw all the S those angles, but even if you're doing an octagonal prism, you still need to find the area of the octagon and then just multiply it by the height. So for this triangular prism, I need to find the area of the base. So to find the area of the base, what I'm going to do is I need to do base area equals base times height because I don't have a right I don't have a right angle. So I'm going to use area equals base times height. So my area is going to equal three times four. I'm sorry, this is the area of a triangle, right? So it's going to be multiplied by one half. One half base times height. So area equals three times four, which is 12, times one half, which equals six. So what they're saying is this area right here, all of this is equal to six, right? Well, how deep does that go? Because remember, so far we're talking about area is only two dimensions, right? Well, we can write, relate that as a three-dimensional figure and say it goes a distance of one because six times one is still gonna give you six. So we can kind of give it a three-dimensional value with it having a depth of one. So what now we're saying is this kind of slice right here is six. Well, how many slices do we have? That is where your height comes in. So what I have is if I did this six, I can kind of create another slice, right? And that would be another six more. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, and that's really bad how I drew this picture, but you guys can see how it works. So what they have is each one of these slices has an area of six. So instead of adding all the sixes up, I can just multiply it by how many slices I have, which as long as I did it correctly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten slices. So I just take the area, which was six, and multiply it by the height, which is ten. So therefore, the volume, of this prism, which is my triangular prism, is going to equal 60. All right, that's it.